Hello everyone, I'm Jen, your Delaware Realtor. Over the past few years, I've helped many buyers purchase homes. And not to toot my own horn, but because I've stressed these do's and don'ts so much, probably so much that I sound like a broken record, I've never had a deal fall apart. I know that purchasing a home is a major investment and it, the whole experience could be very overwhelming, especially for first time home buyers. So today I wanted to share with you the do's and don'ts that I go over with my clients. I'm hoping that by watching this, I can help you have least stressful and smoothest transaction. So let's start off with what you should do. The first step is to get pre-approved for a mortgage. Since the pandemic, a pre-approval has become mandatory for touring homes. Sellers only want pre-approved buyers walking through their homes to avoid looky-loos. If you want to start your home search before getting pre-approved, I recommend going to open houses. But if you want to schedule a showing, in most cases, you're asking the seller to vacate their property, take their kids and or animals. This is a huge undertaking and very disruptive to the seller's life. So sellers are not going to be willing to do that for buyers that are not pre-approved and ready and willing to make an offer on their property. Getting pre-approved involves working with a lender to see how much you can afford to borrow based off of your income, credit score, and other factors. This also helps your realtor to narrow down what is inside your budget and what you can tour. Nothing is worse than looking at homes outside of your budget. I've had many clients that have looked at homes outside of their budget, and then once they see what's inside their budget, they're not happy with that. And this applies to any price point. In addition to sellers requiring a pre-approval to tour homes, a pre-approval is absolutely mandatory if you want to submit an offer. In a market that is quickly moving, if you find a home that you absolutely love and want to submit an offer and you're not ready to go, that home will most likely be sold by the time that you are done that pre-approval process. That's why it is so important to create that relationship with a lender in the beginning when you start getting serious about wanting to purchase a home. Okay, so number two is you should work with a realtor. You probably knew I was gonna say that. <laughs> a good realtor is an invaluable asset to the transaction. I have access to the MLS as well as active listings and coming soon properties, which a lot of times don't go on Zillow or Trulia. I also can look for homes in your budget and match that match your criteria. Buying a home, there is a lot of legal paperwork and I can explain all of that to you so that you're not trying to learn this on the fly. Also, I can negotiate with the sellers on your behalf and I cost you absolutely nothing. A buyer's agent is free to the buyer. It's very important to find an agent that has experience with working with buyers in your area. If you are looking to purchase in Delaware, I would love the opportunity to help you and my information here is right here. Number three on what you should do is get a home inspection. It is very important to have a professional home inspector come through your home so that you not only know what repairs need to be done, but you know the overall condition of the home. What I love about the home inspection report is not only does it show you the major defects, but it also has minors and safety concerns. And it's things that you should just keep up on with the maintenance. Not only are they doing the inspection, but they're also walking through the house with you. I just had a buyer that I'll be honest, she didn't know much about maintaining a home. He walked through the entire house with the buyer explaining where the main water shutoff valve was, how to work the electrical panel, how to work the HVAC system, and anything else that they would need to maintain. For example, knowing that you need to change the AC filter every three months or so. It's very important to not only maintaining the AC, but also maintaining the rest of the house. All right, so number four on what you should do is review your closing docs carefully. There are many, many pieces of paper that you're going to need to sign at the closing table. Now, every attorney that I've worked with in Delaware is absolutely amazing at going over each individual page and letting you know what exactly you are signing. But it is very important to know your rights as a homeowner. There are many legal documents with title work, your HOA, your mortgage, your title insurance, your homeowner's insurance, and it's very important to understand all of these things. A lot of times, the attorney will send out a piece of paper asking you if you want a survey done on your property. I get this question a lot with my buyers where they don't understand what they're being asked. 
So then I explain to them what types of surveys are available to them and help them throughout the paperwork so that they make the right decision for themselves. Number five is to be prepared for home ownership expenses. There's much more to owning a home than just making monthly mortgage payments. There's also maintenance, property taxes, insurance that you need to keep up with on a home. If you purchase a home that is maybe on septic, keep in mind that you need to have that septic pumped every three years, depending on how many people are living in the home. If you purchase a property that is on land, are you going to keep up with the grist that is on that property? Are you going to have someone else mow it? It's very important to have a budget set aside for emergencies and expenses that may come up. By following these five tips, you'll be well on your way to a successful home buying experience. Remember, purchasing a home is a big deal. It is a big investment and you should take your time and be prepared and work with a qualified realtor who has experience with buyers so that they can help you along the way. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the things that you shouldn't do during the home buying experience. Okay, so the first thing that you should not do is make any changes to your credit profile. Your credit score is a very important factor in determining your eligibility and the interest rate that you will pay. If you make changes to your credit, such as taking out a new credit card or opening up any kind of new loans, this could jeopardize your mortgage approval. If you decide to work with me, you will hear me say multiple, multiple times throughout the transaction that once we go under contract, I, this is how I phrase it, your bank account is no longer yours. So that means you are not making large cash deposits, you are not making large purchases, you cannot open any new credit cards, do not buy appliances, do not buy furniture, a new car, a, a boat, I've seen, I've seen that before. Um, just do not do anything that would change your credit. Honestly, when we go under contract, you should just pay your bills and that is it. Save all of that for after closing. If we leave the closing table and you go buy a new car, I don't need to know about it, right? Because you have your new house. <laughs> so make sure that it is very important that you do not change your credit during this whole process. Number two is don't forget to factor in closing costs. Not only is there a down payment, but there's also closing costs associated with purchasing a home. These closing costs include your transfer tax, your title fees, your administrative fees. Sometimes there is a loan application fee from your lender. There are many fees that go into it. This happens a lot where buyers will hear 100% financing for a loan program. That 100% financing actually means for your down payment. For example, the VA and USDA loans says 100% financing. That means for your down payment, but you still have closing costs. And in Delaware, I usually estimate closing costs to be around 4% of the sale price. So make sure that you don't forget that you still have those fees that you'll need to bring to the closing table. Number three is to not make an emotional decision when purchasing a home. The home buying process is very emotional. You not only are making a large investment, you're also investing in your future. So it's important to understand exactly what you're purchasing and how this all plays out. During the height of the market, I saw many buyers get caught up in the moment and end up buying a home that was well over their budget. And now I feel like they are regretting that decision. It's important to look at your budget, see what you can afford, because a lot of times you may be pre-approved for say 400, but you really don't like the monthly payment at 400. You really like your monthly payment where the 350 price range is. So it's important to set your boundaries, know exactly how you're going into the process and to not make an emotional decision. And also don't let other people get into your head. If you like the home and you wanna go for it, then go for it. But if you don't like the home, do not feel pressured into putting an offer in on a home because there is a chance that it could get accepted and then you are under contract in that binding agreement. This actually goes into my next point, which is don't rush your decision. It is perfectly fine to take a few months to look for a home. You don't feel that you need to purchase the first home that you go to see because you feel like you're being rushed into this decision. Go to open houses, check out the neighborhoods, check out websites, look at Facebook groups to get a feel for where you wanna live. It's a big, 
decision to purchase a home, especially if you don't know the area or not really sure where you want to live. It's also important to work with a trusted realtor who can provide guidance and keep you on track. If there are certain things that you have said, for example, I have many buyers that say, I absolutely want a basement. And then we go look at homes that maybe are not, or on a crawl space or maybe are just on a slab. One of the things I'm going to ask you, if you've already said that is, you, you know, I'm going to remind you, remember, you said you wanted a basement. So let's just think about this for a second before making this huge decision and then regretting that decision later. It is perfectly okay to take your time when deciding to purchase a home. Remember, buying a home is a significant investment and requires time, knowledge, and patience. If you follow these do's and don'ts, I'm positive that you will have a smooth home buying experience. If you are looking to purchase in Delaware, I would love the opportunity to work with you. My information is down below in the description or I will put it right here on the screen. Feel free to send me an email so we can set up a phone call and go over what you are looking for. If you are a seller that is looking to sell your property in Delaware, I would also love the opportunity to help you. There is a link down below in the description for an instant valuation of what your home is worth. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe and make sure you like this video. And I will see you on the next one. Hey, are you thinking about moving to Delaware? Here is a full guide for Delaware residents. And if you would love to tour Delaware New Construction Homes with me, check out this playlist right here. And don't forget, subscribe to my channel.